times about, you know, stuff like that goes a little faster. What, what you said about my plane? <laughs> I'm actually getting a little chilly. How you doing? I'm hot as can be. Anyway, yeah. My legs are cold. I mean, we're gonna open up a little bit again, but... Oh, is it closed completely right now? Yeah. Because I, I started sweating, like, <laughs> seriously. Go ahead. Uh, flight level 700 control. Seven decimal eight five and one two six decimal five five zero kilo. Uh, Iceman Radian, I'm at two one zero kilo form. Uh, flight level zero seven zero. They're in a lot of position. Report. Right, Iceman, what's up? Uh, that's November two one zero kilo form. Flight level zero seven zero. Uh, we are. Estimating 62 north. Estimating 62 north, uh, 15 west at 13500, and Ratu next. Yeah, so uh, oceanic flying is a little different than you know, just flying around the U.S. or something. Because they don't have radar out here. So instead we just give them position reports uh, about every hour or so, you know, each little point along our flight plan. So we tell them, you know, the estimated time at the next point, or well, the next point after that will be, then we report over the next point, and give them the estimate at the next point, things like that. And of course we wear these immersion suits and life vests so that if we do have to land in the water, we won't freeze to death, we won't drown, and uh, get some life vests so we can get out in those, and further ensure that we don't freeze to death or drown. So, uh, Today those seas are looking pretty rough. Would not be a fun day to land down there, but I think we could do it. I'm not gonna worry about it because at this point there's nothing I can do about it. I did kind of rip the uh, rubber around my neck, so I gotta be sure to keep my head above water if we end up down there, so I don't just get a bunch of cold water in the suit. Also, uh, Jack, sorry I ripped your suit. We'll all figure that out. <laughs> also, sorry, I peed on your suit. <laughs> I, I think you, I think you owe Jack a new suit. <laughs> it's kind of warm up here. So, also, as most of you know, um, three years ago I flew around the world in the Bonanza. I've crossed the North Atlantic before, but I've never gone to Greenland or Iceland. I went to the Azores, which is a little further south. So this has been a pretty interesting experience. We've just seen some fantastic things. I think I'm going to try to start making this a uh, more regular thing. It's so close, like, right. totally doable. Yeah, absolutely. The only the only problem is, like, the more expensive fuel prices or something. Yeah. But, but it's even not too steep. Well, if you do it right, if you right. do it right at well, your time things properly, you, you'll, it won't be too expensive. Yeah, I think next summer I'd like to just fly, like just spend a couple of weeks flying around like all of Greenland and Iceland. I think that'd be really fun. So. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pee. I need to start strategizing here. I had like six cups of coffee this morning. <laughs> Why? Because I like coffee. And I forgot that we were flying. Uh, I need to pee. I need those bags. I don't know where you put them. Uh, okay. Uh, this will be better than the uh, bottle of okay, I'll try it. Can you get that in the suit? I'm pretty sure I can, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. I'll just leave that there. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to turn around, but this is especially hard. Yeah, I drank way too much before taking off as well. <laughs> that must be fine. Uh, I'm just going to 
gonna check out the clouds for a little while. Yeah, me too. <laughs> they, they look so pretty. They do. <laughs> you know what? I'm too pee shy. Yeah? Yeah, it's not happening. I'll we'll have to try in a little bit again. I'm just gonna leave it down there. <sighs> Ice and radio number 210 echo uniform position. Number 210 echo uniform echo right. I number 210 echo uniform 62 north 015 west 1350 Zulu maintaining flight level 070 estimating rat to Romeo Alpha Tango Sierra uniform 1443 Dev V Dev V Delta Echo Victor Bravo India next over. You can call the Ratsu of this frequency or on one three three decimal six eight zero. Okay, we'll report Ratsu either this frequency or one three three decimal six eight zero, November two one zero uniform. Okay, so we gotta switch these to uh eight point three three megahertz spacing because uh, 133.68 is not something we use in the U.S. ATI, the 110 Super, uh, requesting Mercianic clearance for uh, entry point in Rapture at 1430, Mach 184, level 3620. Hello, we're down. Yeah? Yep. Got it all sealed up and put away? Yeah. It's in Louis' proximity, so if we had turbines in a pass. <laughs> Ready on 123.45, November 210, Echo Uniform looking for a relay. Yeah, we're a little over 200 miles out from Scotland. Just southwest of the Faroe Islands over here, where apparently I'm getting cell service right now. Just crazy. And uh, just crossed from uh, Reykjavik's airspace over into uh, Scotland, I think. Copy that, sir. Good fault. Thanks. It's crazy. We're like, we're like 80 miles from land, and I've got a text message. Did you? Yeah, I got like a Verizon message telling me, welcome to the Faroe Islands. <laughs> That's cool. That's crazy. How does that happen? We're, yeah, we are, we're like 80 miles from land. 100%. Look at that, guys. 80 miles that way, and zoom in, and there are like no little random islands out here or something like that. Ow. So why does that say Barrow 1012 when the altimeter is set to 1013? Huh. Just an Aspen. Yeah. If you haven't heard about all of our Aspen problems, check out the uh, first ocean crossing video, I'll link that right here. Complete avionics meltdown over the middle of the ocean. How I feel does that like happen? I'm seeing a whale. Yeah? After this one we can back the suits away for a little bit. Yeah, this is our uh, last real ocean crossing, the last one for me and the last one for these guys for a while. November 210 Echo Uniform, you are now identified. Are you happy to remain on a basic service or are you looking for something higher? Uh, 070 is fine for now, thanks. It's very good. Roger. We hit get the ATIS, that's uh. November 210 Echo Uniform, sorry, pass your message. Uh, that's November 210 Uniform, uh, just requesting uh, a descent into WIC. Uh, we'd like to start it now if possible. Zero Uniform. Uniform, descend now, flight level 50. Down to 50, Zero Uniform. And November 0 Echo Uniform, uh, you've got further descent with WIC, so you can squawk 7000 and contact them now, 119.7. Goodbye. Uh, that's 119.7 and squawking 7000 for WIC, Zero Uniform. See, that's what's weird about the UK is we're essentially we're squawking, you know, VFR, VFR yeah. but we're still IFR. Okay, um, you can go ahead and give them a call. I'll get the ATIS here. 
Uh, WIC approach, November 2108 uniform, uh, descending through 6800. Number 210 Echo Uniform, uh, week approach, uh, good afternoon, information Bravo is current, runway 31 in use, week QNH 1015, report your position. Uh, that's QNH 1015 and we are uh, 35 miles to the northwest, sir, Uniform. Number 210 Echo Uniform, okay, report cool. your position and level. We're uh, 20 miles out. Uh, Zurich Uniform, we're 20 miles out and uh, just passing through 5,000 or 200 for 5,000. Number 0 Echo Uniform, this and now altitude 2,000 feet on QNH 1015. Uh, down at 2,000, QNH 1015, sir. Okay. Number 0 Echo Uniform, clear the VRDME approach for runway 31, next report, beacon outbound. Uh, clear for the VOR, DME for 31 and we'll report the beacon outbound, sir. Control. Okay, so uh, they're not on radar here, so we're just telling them where we're at, and, uh, what altitude we're leaving, things like that. So they want a continuous descent final approach, that's fine. Uh, we go down to 450 MSL, that's 336 AGL. That's for category A, which we can do as long as we maintain less than 90 knots on the missed approach. Uh, otherwise, minimums go up by 10 feet, but that's not going to be an issue today anyhow. Uh, the missed approach, though, would be climbed straight ahead on the 306 uh, radial to 2,000 feet, then we'll right turn to the VOR and hold at 2,000. So, uh, yeah, basically just go straight ahead to 2,000. That's really about it. So it's a three degree descent angle, so if we're descending at uh, 100 knots, that'd be uh, about 531 feet per minute down. Once we cross the VOR, we can go down to 1,800 feet. And then uh, once we cross 5.7 DME inbound, we can start our continuous descent final approach. The one thing that's really common in a lot of foreign countries is uh, they just use DME arcs for everything. So you can either fly these really wide DME arcs or you fly there and out to some DME and inbound. Um, regular just procedure turns like you see in the US are actually somewhat rare. Oh man, there are castles everywhere, it's so cool. Looks like some oil platforms out here or something. Some interesting stuff offshore. Wow, that's a cool view with the, the sun and the uh, clouds shining on the water and the coast back there. Been getting amazing views on all these flights so far. Do you, uh, did you ever manage to take a pee, JP? Yep. Oh. It's behind you. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Number zero echo uniform, you can H1016, report your position. Uh, three, uh, one zero one six, and uh, just starting our left base turn now, sir. Number zero echo uniform, report four miles final. Or report four miles final, sir. Yeah, November zero echo uniform is a four mile final. November 0 Echo Uniform, runway 31, clear to land, wind 35010 knots. 31, clear to land, 0 Echo Uniform. Echo Uniform, uh, backtrack, vacate left at Foxtrot. Uh, backtrack and vacate left at Foxtrot, so you're Wow. I can't believe we're in Scotland, this is so exciting. I think it's pretty crazy to think we flew this plane here. Yeah. So we officially made it across the North Atlantic. We're here in Scotland. Uh, we just met Drew, he's the handler, fueler, and apparently a customs agent too. It's a pretty good feeling to be done with those immersion suits, to have like finished the Atlantic crossing and be in a new country, sort of. I mean, I guess it's part of the UK, but I've never been to Scotland, so cool. Okay, and apparently the building that we're going into, their office, is a like, control tower from World War II. So that'd be pretty cool, let's go check it out. Old buildings over there. Those. Hangers as well. We've actually got the one below it that we still use. I mean, it's 
functional. It leaks. Sure. But it gets you out of the wind and like you know not in Scotland wind. Just straight out of oh World War II. Look at this little tag on it. It's, this is awesome. It's got like a a royal a royal emblem on it. Is this? It's like a, a sheep's sheep or pig? Sheep. sheep. So haggis is a sheep's <laughs> stomach <laughs> with like oats and I don't know things like that. Apparently, it's like a big local thing. So I figured one night in Scotland, I've got to try a local dish, try some local whiskey, and uh, let's see here. Let's yeah. See how it goes. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is a pig stomach. Actually, no, no this, sheep this stomach. Is, or, yeah, sheep stomach. That's so the actually, chicken, this isn't is it? This is just chicken. See, I, I, okay. The chicken's good. Okay, so this. Yeah, this. Here, you can see that. So that must be the. Uh, yeah, that's the haggis. Okay. So this is a, a sheep stomach with, filled with like oats and things like that. Um, that is so much better than it sounds. Like that's really good. Yeah. So uh, we guys come to Scotland. It's awesome. They've got castles and they've got this delicious sheep stomach with stuff in it. It's great. So we just bumped into some kids that told us that right over here is the smallest street in the world. I feel a little scammed. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not convinced. I think it's just a sidewalk. <laughs>
Have you seen places like this before? Never. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a castle before, I don't think. Not a real one. <laughs>